Good morning, boys and girls. It's Karen Lee coming to you from my living room in South Berwick for another edition of Karen Reads. Today I have a book for you called The Whisper about a little girl and a book, a, ma a rather magic book. You might think of what the pictures in the book make you think about, and she will share what they make her think about. All right. There once was a little girl who loved stories. She loved how the words and pictures took her to new and secret places that existed in a world all her own. The characters became her friends, and quite often she grew to love them. One afternoon, while waiting for school to be dismissed, the little girl noticed a mysterious book perched high up on a single shelf. What's that book, she asked her teacher. That is a magical book of stories, replied her teacher. It was a gift from my grandmother when I was just about your age. I have an idea. Would you like to borrow it for the night? Oh, yes, please, thank you, said the little girl, just as the clock struck three. The teacher gave her the book, and with great anticipation, the little girl sprinted out the door and ran all the way home. Maybe you can see some of the words spilling out here, like mirror. Oh, I can't read them backwards. Hopefully you can read them. They're spilling out of her book and into the fox's net. Once home, the little girl greeted her dog and ate supper, and when she was just about to burst with excitement, she escaped to her room to read. The little girl opened the book and began turning through the pages one by one. Each picture was more beautiful and curious than the next. By the time she arrived at the very last page, she could scarcely see for her eyes were filled with tears. Where were the words? Where were the stories? It's just not a book of stories without any words, she thought. As the little girl paged through the wordless book, she heard the wind blow and then a small whisper. Dear little girl, don't be disappointed. You can imagine the words. You can imagine the stories. Start with a few simple words and imagine from there. Remember, remember, beginnings, middles, and ends of stories can always be changed and imagine differently. There are never any rules, rights or wrongs in imagining. Imagining just is. The whisper sounded so knowing and wise to the little girl that she opened the book to the first page and began. At first it felt difficult to imagine a story, so she looked harder at the picture. Are the bears best friends, she wondered? Maybe the blue bear is bringing honey as a gift. Bears love honey. Blue bears visit. Now that's a good title, she thought. Then she began to tell herself a story. Blue bear arrived on the first day of spring 
he promised dot 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 so the story goes on from there we'll just have to imagine what the rest of the story is the little girl studied the second picture there's that little rabbit again she thought I wonder what that man is saying to the magnificent ox. I know, dot, 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 the secret. Mr. Ox, you must please promise not to tell anyone, but we need your help. Last week, dot, 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 and the story will go on from there, and we just have to imagine what it will be. That is a magnificent ox. The words began to come more and more easily to the little girl. Then the words grew into sentences and the sentences became stories. The quest. Their hundred mile journey began in a sturdy wooden boat. Are we there yet? asked Rabbit. In another two days and one night, replied the lion. Oh, that's a very long time. I forgot. Please remind me again. Me again. Where are we going? Asked Rabbit. You can see all the many things going on in this picture. Many things to imagine about. And notice how many of her pictures include crowns. That one was on the lion and the elephant. Tiger's Prayer. That's the title. All the creatures of the land and near and far would be coming and preparations were being made. The clown in the pointed hat would play music on his accordion. The wind horse would jump through hoops Tea would be served exactly at noon, for Tiger had something important to say. And you see the crown on the tiger. A birthday party. As instructed, we arrived at exactly 3.33. One four-leaf clover and a large pot of hot steeping tea had been purposely placed near the entrance of the woods. An owl perched in a tree to our left and asked, who, who? We promptly answered with the secret password. Our job was to bring the birthday cake, vanilla with vanilla cream frosting and black raspberry filling with exactly six candles on top. Pan was very particular and you could never know quite what to expect, but he insisted on throwing the surprise party for dot, dot, dot. we can imagine the rest of the story. The Magic Cloak. One night, a mysterious man in an elaborate cloak sailed into our harbor. Quite quickly, it became obvious to us that he had some kind of, he was some kind of wizard or magician for he could blow bubbles in the shapes of things. What was even more extraordinary was that the bubbles, once released, became real. Before long, enormous white whales filled our once calm harbor. Amazing as it was to see, we had to do something quickly to dot, dot, dot. And the magician has a crown on. A bubble in the shape of a whale. 
the golden key. That very morning, Owl told us he would pick us up at midnight. We must be on time and prepared for anything. He held the small golden key tightly in his beak as we flew into the indigo night sky. We were ready to face dot, dot, dot. And the person on the owl is wearing a crown. Word by word, hour after hour, the little girl imagined an entire story for each page. And when the moon was full and bright, she grew sleepy and drifted off into a dream world, dream world woven out of threads of the pictures and the stories she had imagined. More crowns. When she woke, the little girl felt grateful for the small knowing whisper. Already she missed her new friends, the ox, the owl, and the tiger. She yearned to open the book again, but the sun was up over the horizon and the birds were already fluttering about, chirping their morning songs. She did not want to be late for school, so she tied herself scooped up the book and rushed out the door. And this time she's wearing the crown. Along the path, she met a fox holding a curiously round package. Excuse me, little girl, said the fox. I believe I have the words to your book. I saw them spill away, and because I am a very clever kind of fox, I caught them in my net just before they drifted too far off. Oh, thank you, replied the little girl, feeling a bit confused. Now, please, before you leave, could I bother you for a small favor? Asked the fox. Why, of course, answered the little girl. Again, she's wearing the crown. The fox thanked the little girl, and the little girl thanked the fox, and she gathered the book and the bundle of words and hurried down the path toward where school began once again. She's helping him get some grapes. I didn't know fox ate grapes, did they? I am sorry I am late, said the little girl, still catching her breath. There was a whisper, and I imagined stories for every picture, and I overslept. And the words, I didn't know that they had fallen away, but the clever fox caught them in his net, and, but I loved your book, and, and, and I almost forgot. Thank you. I have so many stories to tell you. I can't wait to, to hear, replied the teacher with a smile. That's it. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.